Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and it is another craft storage solution video. Thumbs up if you like craft storage videos. I've got to tell you, um, I've been trying to do this video for a couple of days, but I was overwhelmed because I have a lot of different ways that I store my paper, and I have paper for a lot of different projects. So um, I thought I would kind of go through, um, show you how I started storing my paper, and um, give you some different ideas for, in case you don't have as much as I do, or you have more than I do, which would be rather I would love to see that. If you have more paper than I do, please leave a link in the video description so I can see your stash because, oh my word, I've got so much paper. Um, when I first began scrapbooking, I could fit all the paper that I had, all my paper and cardstock, in one of these expandable um, files. And this is the Generations brand. It doesn't have a, uh, a label on it anymore. And you used to be able to get these at Walmart, anywhere that would sell scrapbooking supplies would have them. And there's just all these dividers in there. Now what I use this for now is some specialty papers. I have um, mulberry papers in here. Um, it's actually mostly mulberry papers. Some embossed card stocks that um, I'm pretty sure I got these at Martin's for like five cents a sheet or something. But you know, they're kind of special and not like the other card stocks. So I wanted to have them uh, separate, like any sort of glittered card stocks or um, specialty paper doilies, anything like that would go in here. Like this is, um, oh, this is neat. This is velvet flocked paper. So, I mean, that's fun. I had just lots of little, little specialty papers. Um, I, these metallic sheets, you know, that I would do iris folding with that all that sort of stuff would go in here. Um, but originally I could fit everything that I had in here, my regular patterned and basic cardstock. So if you just have a few sheets of paper, if you don't have a ton, this is a great solution if you can find something like that. Um, there's also these pockets. They're just like a 12 by 12 envelope and these are really nice. Like if you're going to go scrapbooking and you want to just gather all of the supplies for one page together, like you want the uh, cardstock and papers and embellishments for a page, these are great. And you can also use like the, the hefty, huge, I think it's hefty Ziploc, not Ziploc, obviously, I believe it's hefty brand, but it's got the zipper on the top and it's like 13 by 15, the bags. And those are great for storing pages in progress so they can keep all your stuff together while you go to scrapbook. Now this is neat too. This is um, a paper saver by Generations. And and I do have another um, brand, one that's very similar to this that I take scrapbooking with me. Um, but you've got two different, actually this one has three different size pockets. You can see from the edge. And let me just open it up here. It's got a little push button opener here. And then if I open this up, now this would also be good if you want to take it to a crop because you could put your card stocks and pattern papers in the back. You could put your, um, I don't know, photos or memorabilia in the middle. And then the front tiny pocket, you could put photographs or however you like to organize your things when you go scrapbooking. But what I use this for is again, more specialty papers. I have um, some like copper foil. So I have these books of copper foil that's inside here. There's like a little booklet. It's all my just sheet leaf, copper leaf, you know, and gold leaf and stuff. I have them separated by type. There was a time when I was really into that and I think I bought them whenever they went on sale at one of my art suppliers. And then I have like smaller little baggies. Like when I don't use up a sheet, I put them in these little baggies. So that's in there. Um, I have these foil sheets for, actually this was from one of those hot foil stamping pens. Um, I totally forgot I had this stuff or maybe that's from the hot. No, this is for like, if you want, I think, sticker or something or maybe that's a hot foil do you see i don't even know i don't even know that's how bad it says how often i get into this i have magnet sheets here um oh and these are fun these were out several years ago they were made by reynolds wrap but they're colored foil and you could just emboss it with like a pencil or a pen it was really fun so i have that in here these are again are more metallic special specialty papers that i have um and i do have some more like inclusion papers papers like flowers pressed in them and you know different kind of fancier papers like that I just don't want I know they'd get lost in my stash of regular scrapbooking papers so oh, this one's really pretty um this was little special papers that I picked up at scrapbook star stores over the years that I just didn't have a purpose for yet but they were too pretty to pass up so that's what I have in this container and again if you don't have as much paper as I do maybe you're a collage artist and you just want to keep those like half sheets and bits and bobs and cutoffs this would be great for a collage artist because you could really contain all those you know mid-sized sheets or even scraps and still be able to get to them because you don't have all 12 by 12 pockets some of the pockets are you know four inches and some are like 10 inches so you've got different size pockets so everything doesn't get lost because that's definitely a uh, consideration. 
All right, and again, another one, another option. Um, I think this one is by, it says it's by Archival. Uh, no, this is by Generations 2. So Generations, I hope they're still in business because they have an awful lot of good storage solutions. Now this is a um, another accordion style paper holder. This is what I have all my vellum in. And um, it unzips so you can pull it right open like that. And I have all my printed vellums in here. I think I probably have some plain vellums as well, but mostly my printed vellums. And I have quite an obscene amount of these. I just really like them. And um, I began collecting them when I'd find a sale, when I first started scrapbooking. And then um, I really ought to use it more because I find it's one of those items that I had a grand old time collecting, but I don't really use all that much. So I think doing these videos is really helping me see what I have that I may have forgotten about. Um, and I think printed vellum is coming back in style, so I'll be ready to go, ready to roll. Uh, scrap paper is a huge problem that we have um, as scrapbookers because who wants to, you know, use a little bit of a 12 by 12 piece of paper and then have the rest of the paper damaged or lost? So what I do is I have this milk crate here. If I set it on the table, hmm, I don't think you can see it any better from the table, but it's a it's a uh, milk crate that you can buy at any department store. They usually have tons of them at back to school times. And there's a ridge inside all of these crates so that they can stack up together and also so they can hold hanging file folders. So I have a hanging file folder for every color. And um, I'm gonna share a thrifty tip with you too. So within the hanging file folder, I actually have a regular um, eight and a half by 11 folder. And in these little folders inside, I have a vinyl that I can cut on my die cutter, but I don't buy vinyl. What I do is I go to sign shops and ask if they have any scraps. And they generally will have these little pieces that are too small for them to use in their big machines. And every once in a while they'll have a stack of it and they'll just wanna get rid of it because they, they don't think they're ever really gonna get to it. You know, it piles up just like our paper scraps pile up. Um, so I keep all of like my purple papers in here and I keep my prints and my cardstocks together. I don't separate further than that. Um, if I find that, I always look in my scrap bin first when I need a piece of paper, but if I find like it's getting too crammed full, what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll punch a bunch of shapes um, and, or, or I will uh, go through, take it to my kid's uh, craft class and let them just have at it and play with it. Um, I might die cut a bunch of buttons or photo corners or something like that that I know I'm going to use a lot and that will help me weed out the stash and sometimes I just go through and I'm like if I see a piece of paper I'm like I'm not going to use that. I will toss it but that I, I haven't had to do that in years. I'm pretty good about getting into this bin first when I need paper and this actually sits under my bench where I work. I've got two other crates like this. One has um, back stock of back to school supplies so when they had the big sales at the beginning of the year I buy extra notebooks and boxes of markers and crayons and glue sticks and all that stuff's in the bottom because I don't need to get get it that very often so that's in a crate like this on the bottom and um, so if my kids need a notebook or pencils or whatever, I can just go right there. They know where it is too. The next crate up, I used to have fabric in, but I'm gonna show you how I just revamped my fabric storage today actually. And I'm gonna show you that. So my second crate up has duct tape in it. And then the third crate up is the paper. And I like that up high because I can reach right in and I get into this every day. So it's um, really handy. Now I want to show you how I store my art papers. They're larger in size, so they need a different storage solution. And I think I can probably just swing my tripod right over here. Here. and see that big orange cloth <laughs> I'm gonna remove that because this right here is a poster board rack that I picked up at Rite Aid oh many years ago I think it was before I even had kids um, when the stores got a business Rite Aid's um, dollar stores any place that sells foam board foam core or poster board they have these display racks so I got this for five dollars maybe ten five or ten and um, I use this for all my pads of drawing paper and also my pastel paper. Now I can't put my large watercolor sheet paper because I think this goes like, this is like 20 by 28 and my um, watercolor sheet paper is 22 by 30. So my big sheets of watercolor paper are not on here, but it fits my like Canson Me Tints pastel paper, all of my pads of watercolor paper and blocks of watercolor paper. It's so easy for me to reach in there and get what I want and I'm always reaching in here for something. I've got palette paper here. I've got tracing paper and vellum. Um, I've got these uh, really lovely drawing papers down there. Some Canson, I think it's 400 drawing paper. And that's great because my kids love to use that. And I've got some less expensive watercolor paper here too for the kids to use. It was something I tried. I wasn't really happy with it. Um, but you know, it's fine for kids use, but I, I was uh, the, the Blick Studio watercolor paper, which I wasn't, I wasn't that happy with. I thought it was the same as Fabriano because they were making it, but I wasn't really thrilled with that. But I'm, um, you know, it's fine for 
for kids projects and non-painting projects, I think. Um, but anyways, that's where I keep all of that stuff. And also if I have like a, like a piece of large piece of glass for picture framing, I will also put that in there on the bottom just so it doesn't get knocked over and broken. You know, if it's big enough for me to want to use on another project. And because um, I share the basement with my husband and his workshop, I just keep this uh, piece of fabric draped over there just to help me with dust. Now I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to readjust it so I can show you how I store my large scrapbook papers. In case you were wondering, that's how I keep those um, larger accordion envelopes stored. They're just on that shelf. And actually this is a crop and style paper sticker binder and I keep um, boxes and templates, things that don't really fit, that don't really go with my messy stencil storage. I put it in there, templates of things I might want to make in the future and that's in there. Um, we might go over that later, but um, for now we're going to swing on over to where I keep my scrapbooking papers and it is right over here. Um, I've got a bunch of these little, uh, I don't know what you call them. They're, um, and these 12 by 12 units. I'm just going to move my chair under my desk out of the way a little bit. I'm going to wander over here. I couldn't push my chair in all the way because I had stuff in the way. Oh, surprise under my desk. Um, so these here are about, I would say two and a half to three inches tall. No. Yeah. I'd say, I'd say maybe this tall one is like maybe three and a half. And um, they're 14 by 14. And then I just keep my paper pads in these. I tend to buy stacks of paper and collections of paper like this because um, I don't have to feel so stingy with it. I used to buy paper by the sheet and then I don't do that very much anymore because I have a really hard time cutting into paper like that. It's just too precious. And I, if I have two sheets of everything or three sheets of everything, I have no problem tearing into it and really creating stuff. So that's my preference, but this would obviously work just as well with single sheets of paper. Um, hopefully you can, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, I think, so that you can see a little bit better there. It's hard when I'm that far away from the monitor to see what the heck I'm doing. Um, I'm just going to, you know what, I'm going to pause it and move the camera. Extreme close up, but I adjust. All right, that's a little bit better, I think. I had to move my lights around too. I have some dust, shoddy ballasts up there that I got to replace. I need some new fluorescent lights. Um, so here you can see that not only are these great for paper, I can also put like my large stay wet palette, watercolor palettes, um, albums, things that, um, well, it's mostly paper though, but other large things. It's really good for flat, large things. These are by crop, crop and style as well, but there's other companies that make these. Um, I know that like the big craft stores, AC Moore anyway sells, maybe it's Jetmax or Jetamax or something like that, but it's a very similar layout where you can buy a cube at a time. I think Target has them too, and you can kind of build as you go. I keep mine flat just because I don't like my paper curling and um, I don't know, it just seems to work really well for me like this. And as you can see, I do have a lot of paper, so it's going to take me a while to use it up. And I do actually use quite a bit up because I, this is awful, I do, I like paper and I buy it. And so I do use up enough that I can always put my paper here because it's not completely chock-a-block full. So, well, that... I know it's not an excuse. I really should join some sort of support group, but that's how I keep my um, my 12 by 12 pads of paper. Now I'm going to show you how I keep my cardstock, but it's going to require another camera angle change. So hang on to be patient with me, please. Okay, this is like a really weird angle. You're like in a spidery depths corner of my craft room. And this right here, I have some, um, when I buy like a ream of cardstock, um, or I have like a large pack of eight and a half by 11 inch paper. They fit perfectly in these shelves and these are actually sandpaper storage shelves. Um, I've mentioned it before. My parents have a hardware store and they had an extra set of these shelves that they were getting rid of. And I said, whoa, that would fit my eight and a half by 11 inch paper perfectly. So I grabbed that. And then like the, the kind of papers that I keep, um, open stock is to tighten up the head on this tripod here. Um, I need to talk with my hands, huh? Um, like I, I love the uh, recollections, 110 pound cardstock. So I grabbed a ream of that in cream and in white, and that's there. I also get Nina by the ream, and um, I have, I usually have like a ream of Georgia Pacific, just a you know cheap white basic cardstock, and then I've got these other um, full packs like of uh, 50, 25, 50 sheets of cardstock I picked up from the paper cut at the last one of the last stamp shows I went to. They were really beautiful, a lot of pearly ones and. 
I thought they would be really, really handy to have in a larger pack like that. And also when you get going on a project, I make scrapbooks every year, Scrabble calendars for my my mother and my mother-in-law, you go through a lot of cardstock, like cream and white. And so I like to have that on hand so I don't have to stop in the middle of a project and run out to the store. And every once in a while you'll get yourself into one of these projects where you will be really consuming a lot of white and cream cardstock. So that's why I have that storage for that up there. I also have like a package of glossy cardstock for doing um, polished stone and other specialty stamping techniques. And uh, that's up there. And you know, it's just kind of, um, that's kind of eight and a half inch by 11 inch cardstock stash. Now in here, this is actually, this is one of my favorite finds and I'm going to tip the camera down a little bit so you can see that. Um, this is a record album cabinet. You know, like if you buy a record album, I'm trying to not you know, eclipse this with my shadow. Um, I have my paper in here, and this was a, um, I found this, gosh, it was probably about eight, eight or nine years ago at a, um, on the side of the road, it was at a junk shop, and it was $10, and um, it was just kind of like a, you know, just stained brown color, and my husband painted it for me, and it was just ideal. So, but what I did, because this is all wood in here, and the wood is not sealed, I just took some junk paper, some toilet tail paper I didn't like, and I just slid it um, on each end of, between my cardstock and the, the dividers in there, just so I wouldn't have any acid migration from the, um, from the wooden cabinet to my papers. But I have, you know, yellows and whites, purple, blue, blue, you know, reds, green, I have it just kind of spectrumed across there. And then every once in a while you find some interesting papers and I just put those containers of the papers like this interesting corrugated paper, two for a dollar. I figured, why not? That's fine. I'll use that for something, probably in the kids class. So I keep all those other interesting packages of specialty paper that aren't necessarily like the expensive stuff that I want to hoard. It's not the paper I want to hoard, it's the paper I actually want to use. <laughs> I really need a support group, people. But uh, there's that paper. And I'm just going to see what I have for time. I want to show you how I store my 6x6 six six pads of paper. So let me pause the camera and we'll go to that storage solution. Okay, so for my 6x6 six six and smaller pads of paper, like the mat stacks and, um, you know, just the mini pads. And I love these for card making because I have a hard time cutting into a beautiful piece of 12x12 12 12 paper sometimes, but I have no problem um, cutting into one of these. And also it makes card making really quick and easy. And also if you do like the Project Life, I think that these would probably be a little bit handier. So if you are someone who's only doing Project Life or card making, this may be all you need for paper storage. These are locker bins from the Dollar Store, the Dollar Tree actually, and they still have them. Um, I have my, the bench that I work on is actually made with two of the nine unit stubby, uh, stubby, <laughs> cubby storage units from Target. And um, I just put these in some of the containers and it works great for me. But see, I can put all of those six by six pads, four by six pads in like origami pads right in there. And um, that's pretty much all I have for those. I use them a ton and I try to make sure that I use them up before I buy more. Now you will end up with a little bit more, ed a little more room on one of the edges because this is obviously wider than six inches. But um, I found it's great for putting these little collage paper pads. Um, this is Crafty Secrets. I don't know if they're still, I, I heard they went out of business and they went back in business. Also these little um, artist trading card collections. I don't do a ton of collage work, but it's, this this little area in here is good for care, for putting those little um, ephemera booklets. So if you have those, that's another good option. Um, but also I really think that the uh, multi-pocket expandable like the coupon organizers or the big ones that I showed you where you had the the column for paper and then the shorter columns for photos and things I think that would probably be the best bet for those of you trying to store collage um collage papers I always keep kind of like I'll show you this I keep a junk drawer and um I'm sure you all have junk drawers in your craft room but I have a collage junk drawer and it's not too bad right now because what I did one time was I went to a scrapbook crop and I just brought the junk drawer and I said you know what I'm bringing my album I'm bringing my junk drawer and I think I just bought some basic cardstock and I'm like I am using what's in here I have such interesting things in here these are like vinyl samples from a sign shop um very interesting material samples I got some scrap mat board I've got some things 
95 quilt. Um, I've got this thing of microscope slides because you used to have to shoot your own slides um, back in the day as an artist and you always end up with like half of what you shoot will be a dud. So all these little old slides to make frames with, skeleton leaves, all sorts of goodies. And they're just in a drawer that I can rifle through um, as I need to. So I hope those ideas helped you with your paper storage solutions. I also had one of those uh, pop-up um, crop and style towers of paper, but I don't find that that's as useful and I don't think you can buy them anymore. So I really didn't want to show you and then have anybody feel bad if they couldn't find them anymore. Plus I really, I, it's over in the other part of the basement and oh, <laughs> I figured I better show you what I know you can get right now. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, happy crafting.